Ranjini Nambia with another episode of Superwoman in the Travel Industry. Today we have with us a dynamic, should I say sexy, should I say hot, should I call her the vibrant Bhavna Rao from Encompass Experiences. Welcome Bhavna to the show. Thank you Ranjini. Thank you so much for accepting my invitation. Pleasure is on mine. So we don't talk shop, we don't uh, speak to each other, what each of us are in, you know, what their journey has been. So I thought this would be a good idea for me to understand Bhavna and her journey uh, in this industry uh, for a long time. So my journey, uh, well, I'm a BCom honors graduate and immediately after my BCom, I took up articleship in a firm. Okay. Uh, Within one the, year, the boring accounting? Yes, the boring accounting. So like me. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't work. <laughs> so within one year, I realized that CA was not meant to be, it was not destiny. And I realized that I was more of people's person and I wanted to be out there. And hence, marketing was an obvious choice. Okay. So I dived into marketing. Okay. And uh, I spent about eight years marketing, financial, banking and financial products. Still with the financial sector? Absolutely. I mean, okay. I still stuck to the finance because having spent so many of my formative years learning commerce and accounts, I had to like put it to use in some way. Okay. Uh, but it was more of talking and more of selling, so it really uh, didn't matter. Okay. Uh, after spending so many years in marketing, I sort of wanted to take a break. Okay. And I was very fascinated by the tourism industry. Uh, well, not as much by the industry but uh, I was traveler you know by heart I really wanted to be out there the you know wanderlust had like bitten me long 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 ago and I really wanted to see how I could uh, do something in the travel space okay. uh, and hence uh, Bangkok happened okay. I, I actually went to Bangkok after eight years in marketing to pursue my masters okay. in uh, travel and tourism oh okay you studied travel and tourism yes. then yes two years in Bangkok gave me this amazing opportunity okay. to be out there and go solo backpacking across Asia. Mm -hmm. So what I did for those two years was amazing. I mean okay. it was a life changer okay. because I went around you know uh, the whole of Asia okay. uh, which essentially gave me a perspective of what travel really is and what people want. Okay. Uh, I also had a short stint with a travel company in uh, Bangkok. Oh, you worked there? I worked right. there for a bit, okay. mainly because I wanted to understand operations and how it all worked and how to put it all together. And Southeast Asia at that point in time was booming. So it was like, the right, you know, I was at the right place at the right time. Okay. I mean, now it's all history. It's been 12 years of being in the travel industry. I've experimented. I've, uh, you know, uh, I remember the time when I spoke about experiential travel about 10 years ago, people would laugh at me and they're like, what is experiential travel? Have you like coined your own terminology? Mm -hmm. And I said, that's the future. That's and I'm so happy to see today that, you know, everybody is sort of foraying into experiential travel and we're all talking about experiences. It's all about the journey. It's not about the destination. So it's an amazing feeling to be out there and be one of you know, up being a part of it. Absolutely. So, uh, so yeah, it's been 12 years and it's been an amazing journey. No looking back. I still remember the time when I started sitting in Koshi's, in the corner tables, sitting my coffee, writing itineraries. So yes, I've come a long way <laughs> from that at least. And this is Encompass Experiences. Which started two years back. Okay. So this is my new venture. Okay. So I found my uh, dream partner, so to say. Mm -hmm. I've known Taruna, my partner, for the last uh, 10 years or so. Okay. And uh, I would call it serendipity. Uh, you know, we met again, we connected, we reconnected, we kind of, uh, you know, took it from where we had left. And uh, we just believe that we are such different people, but you know, uh, the underlying thing is that we believe in same ethos, we want to do similar things, and hence the collaboration. Sure. And it's been two years of doing some amazing, amazing, amazing uh, trips. Okay. Uh, we specialize in uh, short, uh, in small group journeys, okay. and we also plan very curated trips for uh, individuals, families, a lot of multi generational travel, honeymoons. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's been fun, it's been fun creating. I'm the curator in chief of the company, which is the title which has been given by Taruna. I know, I know, I, I, I liked like it, about. I liked it. Founder and curator, <laughs> I loved it. That's interesting. <laughs> so yeah, so my job is to curate and I, I, I love what I'm doing. I wake up every morning and I say that. Do you believe in that when they say that women have it all? Women have it all. Yeah. I wish. In the travel industry. <laughs> I, I wish, I wish. So I think it's it's, you can't generalize it to a travel industry. I mean, when you say women have it all, it always comes with a caveat, right? Yeah. You can't have it all. Yeah, I mean, for sure. Can you? Yeah. You know, there has to be like a 
work life balance and mm. you know you may have the best of the job you may be working 14 15 hours a day sure. but at the at the end of the day if you're not able to give that quality time to your family you do feel guilty whether you like it or not you may sure. say that hey i enjoy traveling i love my travels i forget my family the moment i get I into know, that plane i know you have plane. such two <laughs> awesome kids <laughs> such lovely ones. i miss them but the thing is i just leave the guilt at the airport and i'm like okay i have to like now travel and do what i have to do but having said that i think it's a lot of support mm -hmm. at home okay. you know women can have it all okay. women can choose to have it all mm -hmm. provided they have a good support structure at home you know uh, you need to have uh, good help at home Absolutely. who can support you through it do you find more women leaders in the travel and tourism industry so i think it also could be uh, you know my belief is that it's really hard to climb that ladder okay. like if you join young in a travel company okay. to be able to reach the top and to have that sort of a work life balance i think is a yeah, how much ever you say i think it's a very very tough call for a woman to take mm -hmm. she will at some point i mean if you're single and if you live your life at your own terms it's possible sure but if you have a family if you have like other commitments i think it's very hard to like really you know leader 14 to 15 hour kind of a schedule mm -hmm. and hence i see there a lot of women starting on their own so this entrepreneurship is great because it gives you that flexibility you can work from home you can balance work i think it's a perfect sort of a you know solution to and women do really well as entrepreneurs and in fact i think and also they multitask well absolutely. isn't it absolutely as you rightly said you find lot of these youngsters uh, working out of uh, you know these work spaces and they all have started on their own i mean they work for two years they get gain some sort of an exposure exposure in the industry and then they move on to become entrepreneurs absolutely. and everybody is doing something different and nice Correct. but but i also see the trend that they're closing up and they're losing losing their interest in a short span as well so how do we tackle that kind of thing so i believe that you know everybody everybody that i know thinks that he or she is a travel planner in their own away like oh i planned my holidays for the last 10 years i can become a travel consultant mm -hmm. i can plan it for my family and friends sure but i think that's very short lived because uh -huh. you're obviously dealing with very different dynamics when you're actually planning it for money okay. when you're doing it for free you're giving advice people are happy to take it okay. as soon as the money angle comes it's like it becomes a serious job sure so i think a lot of people think that it is such it's an industry with no entry exit barrier you can just pretty much work from anywhere you can work remotely it just makes it so much easier for people to join but they don't realize that what beyond your own network okay i mean can you sustain for the next 10 years do you have in you that you can actually network and bring in enough number of people to travel for the next 10 years absolutely so i think uh, a lot of it is to do with not thinking beyond people just jump it thinking that it's easy and it can be achieved do you also think that gender dynamics play a huge role in this industry ah uh, well to be very honest i haven't really faced i mean there may be like a few isolated cases which may happen like i would say 10 years back okay. i've like i've i've been this kind of a person who doesn't have any qualms about saying anything so i have said things like oh i want to reinvent the wheel i want to think different so i've had people telling me hey listen relax we've been in the industry for 40 50 years we've done the right things you just follow the suit and i have been like this rebel saying that no i'm going to do what i'm going to do so i've got i've had cases like that in the past but i think it would be wrong to like sort of say it's gender uh, specific. specific i mean it could be women against women men against men it could be yeah it men against women so i haven't really faced in fact i've met some amazing amazing people in this journey uh, who've not i mean i i can't call them i can't give them an official mentor label but i feel that they've mentored in their own way do you mentor youngsters well good topic <laughs> so i think you know this is one space that our industry has not been very generous to the women kind there is no body as such which is like uh, which has been put together to ensure that women are mentored those who seek help are like you know have some sort of an avenue to go to mm -hmm. so i think uh, some of us including <laughs> madam nambiar <laughs> 
we joined forces in Bangalore and we set up something called Women in Travel. Okay. I would definitely like to see it uh, go to the next level. I think uh, because of our priorities, we've not been able to do uh, as, much as, as much as we could could have. Yes. But perhaps it's an avenue. It's a it's it's a platform where people can actually come and seek help. You know, there's so many ch challenges in the industry in terms of whether it's accounts, whether it's growth, whether it's branding, whether it's meeting the right kind of suppliers. Absolutely. You may not be lucky enough to be like going for these really high profile trade events across the world but there is someone who's got the resources yeah. and we are happy to help out. You do on multiple hats. I know that you also work with a lot of uh, things on the, uh, you know, your, um, you know, recycling of your clothes, things like that. I've read most often. Tell me something about it. Well, yeah. So, uh, so the Mindful Closet Collective is oh, like, uh, <laughs> yes. So it's four of us who are like super passionate about, uh, you know. Okay. I mean, we 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 want our kids to see this world the way we've seen the world, right? Absolutely. We totally believe that, you know. Uh, I mean, we've contributed enough towards you know making this world not a better place but we really want to do in some small way that we can uh, to ensure that you know we're not hurting mother earth so i think one of the initiatives that we've started is the mindful closet collective wherein you encourage people to swap clothes with each other i mean you have your own pre-loved clothes which you've worn probably um, once or twice or you may not have even worn it absolutely you buy it on impulse and you feel oh my god this doesn't work for me i look so beautiful in the mirror when i saw myself in the shop <laughs> and whatever happened when i came home <laughs> so i don't want this so what happens to that you can't give it away to your help it just doesn't work so we we, we sort of started started this initiative where women are happy to exchange clothes and it's been such a fabulous initiative uh, you know, and I, I'm so glad that you're looking uh, setting a sustainable trend as well yes. I'm so so happy on that and thank you so much for spending so much of your valuable time thank you so much and thank you. lovely talking to you likewise thank you bye and for the rest of us it's a wrap and if you like the video do like share and subscribe it's for now a bye